Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise with great honour, as always, to represent the people of Timmins James Bay who put their trust in me to represent their interests and that all of us are here to represent the public good, including the Office of the Prime Minister. I will be definitely supporting this motion. It shows the uh, concern and the sadness of the House of Commons that the Prime Minister's office is under investigation for bribery, corruption, breach of trust, fraud, and that the RCMP are seeking warrants to get production orders from all the key players in the Prime Minister's office, all except one. Benjamin Parham is the only person that they're not seeking production orders from because his emails have been erased. So today, rather than get into all the cast of dubious characters uh, in this disgraceful uh, scandal, I'd like to focus on Benjamin Perrin. I find his role to be particularly interesting because his role in the Prime Minister's office was the lawyer for the Prime Minister of Canada. Mr. Speaker, I will be splitting my time with the member of Gatineau. I just want to put on the record. As a lawyer, he had certain obligations and responsibilities. He was to protect the interests of the Prime Minister and to work for the Prime Minister. So the question is, is what role did Benjamin Perrin play in this deal that is now being investigated for fraud, corruption, and breach of trust? On May 21st, Benjamin Perrin said, I was not consulted on and did not participate in Nigel Wright's decision to write a personal check to reimburse Senator Duffy's expenses. Uh, the RCMP affidavit seems to suggest otherwise. Mr. Perrin also said, I never communicated with the Prime Minister on this matter which as his lawyer I would find it sort of a strange situation. So let's go through this. So Mr. Perrin becomes involved in this scheme on February 19th so that Duffy's lawyer, Ms. Payne, has someone, a legal person in the Prime Minister's office to talk to. Benjamin Perrin steps up. Um, on February 20th, the quote cash for repayment scheme, and that's what it's called, cash for repayment and Deloitte will not find against you, Nigel Wright. Uh, states. So Benjamin Parham is involved in these negotiations. Who authorized him to get involved in these, uh, these negotiations? As the lawyer for the Prime Minister, was he just doing this on his own, working against the express uh, position of the Prime Minister, has been reiterated uh, in a very dubious way by the Parliamentary Secretary. So then we see on February 21st. Now February 21st and February 22nd are key in this scandal, Mr. Speaker. Nigel Wright contacts Benjamin Parham, and they're talking about setting up this story for Mike Duffy, the media lines for Mike Duffy. And Nigel Wright says to Parham, I don't like the optics of sending lines to a lawyer. Let's do it over the phone. <laughs> now, if this was a legal agreement, if this was an honorable agreement, is this something the Prime Minister would support? Why is it that they wouldn't want to put the deal in writing? But no, let's not talk to the lawyer, let's tell Duffy over the phone. So this is the lawyer for the Prime Minister being involved in this. Now, on February 21st, we find out that Benjamin Parham, the personal lawyer to the Prime Minister of this country, has come back with a deal. It's a five-point deal. One, kill the audit and say Duffy's expenses are okay. Now, the audit is in whether or not Mike Duffy has defrauded the taxpayers of Canada. So the first thing is that they're going to kill that audit and say that Mike Duffy didn't defraud the people of Canada. State number two, that Duffy meets the requirements for residency. Well, they knew he didn't because, as Chris Woodcock says, describing Duffy's arrangements as Charlottetown as a residence is too cute. I'll cross that line out. But no, they were going to pretend that Duffy's summer place was his residency. Number three, this is the key element. His expenses stem from his time on the road working for the party. His legal fees will be reimbursed and he will be kept whole, which the RCMP tells us that financially Mike Duffy will not be out of pocket. Number four, for the old duster, hey, if they change the rules back, he'd like to be able to claim his PI residence again <laughs> and start scamming the taxpayers one more time. But that's in the deal. And number five, the Prime Minister's office will take all reasonable steps to ensure the Conservative caucus sticks to the media lines, means nobody's going to badmouth the duster. So Benjamin Parham writes back that they've negotiated this deal. So once again, who's Benjamin Parham negotiating this deal from? And then Nigel Wright says to him, I now have the go-ahead on point three 
with a couple of stipulations. The go-ahead is that they are going to pay Mike Duffy's expenses and pretend that he paid them back. So who gave the go-ahead with those stipulations? Are we to assume that the phantom prime minister was not the one that they had to get the go-ahead from? Because later on that day, as the negotiations go back and forth, they go back and say, we need the, the final word from the Prime Minister before this deal is okay. So they've laid out the deal. So the Prime Minister's own lawyer has laid out a deal that we now see is under investigation uh, for fraud and breach of trust. And then they say, we've got the okay, we are good to go. How can the Canadian public expect to believe that a lawyer, as important as Mr. Parham, with all the professional and legal obligations that he had, would have been involved in the negotiations on his own, would have misrepresented those negotiations to the Prime Minister, would have argued with some fictitious person uh, in the Prime Minister's chair about the stipulation about number three, point number three, that they were going to cover off through the Conservative Party Mike Duffy's expenses, and then turn around and say that he didn't know a thing about this and further, that he never bothered to tell the Prime Minister. I, I would find that very surprising for a man of, of integrity and a man with the professional and legal responsibilities that Mr. Perrin has. So, Mr. Speaker, we know that the deal falls apart. Oh, the other interesting point here um, is that Duffy's lawyer wants the agreement in writing, and Perrin doesn't want to put it in writing. And he says, hey, we ain't saying, selling a car here. I mean, it, it sounds like you're reading The Goodfellas. This is the lawyer for the Prime Minister of the country and saying, we ain't selling a car here. We're not selling a car here. You know, we're not putting it in writing. This deal is about transferring money from the Conservative Party, uh, whitewashing an audit, claiming that a man who's not eligible to sit in the Senate meets the constitutional requirements, and that they will do all this, but they're not going to put it in writing. So again, who is Mr. Parham, the Prime Minister's lawyer representing here, when they're saying they're not selling a car? That, what, you have to sit down and sign a big legal agreement to sell a car, but we will just set up a potentially illegal deal in the Prime Minister's office, not put it in writing, and not tell the Prime Minister. Now, Mr. Speaker, we know that the deal goes off the rails on February 27th when Poor Nigel Wright's gobsmacked to find out that Mike Duffy has scammed so much money that instead of the $30,000, it's $90,000. Now, Senator Gerstein box at this point and walks. Nigel Wright's in a pickle, and for whatever bizarre reason, Nigel Wright agrees to cut the check himself so that the deal stays in place. And then we go back again to the lawyer for the Prime Minister of this country, Mr. Benjamin Parham. On page 5 of the RCMP affidavit, it says, Nigel Wright decided he would personally cover the cost of reimbursing Senator Duffy. After back and forth negotiations between Janice Payne and Benjamin Parham, the legal counsel in the Prime Minister's office, the terms of agreement were set. And then Benjamin Parham tells us on May 21st, he was not consulted on, he was not, not participated in Nigel Wright's decision to write a personal check to reimburse Senator Duffy's expenses. And further, that he's never communicated to the Prime Minister on this matter. So, Speaker, I think what we're seeing here in this scandal is that a cover-up was orchestrated in the Prime Minister's office. That we have, uh, we've named the names of the senators who were involved in whitewashing, attempting to whitewash the audit, including the call uh, from Wright to Gerstein, and Gerstein to Michael Rooney and Deloitte, a friend of his, to try and whitewash an audit. What does whitewashing an audit mean, Mr. Speaker? The audit was about whether or Mike, not Mike Duffy defrauded the people of Canada of $90,000, that he had set up this housing scheme to collect this money, collected per diems. We see Senator Tkachuk involved, Senator Olson, we see Senator LeBreton, Senator Gerstein, all of them have acted shamefully. But within the office of the Prime Minister, there were two key people, Nigel Wright, the Chief of Staff, and Benjamin Parham, the lawyer for the Prime Minister. How can we believe that nobody told the Prime Minister when on February 22nd they were needing the go-ahead on point three, and point three was about coming up with a scheme 
to pay Mike Duffy to make him shut up and they'd make the problem go away. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.